Hi everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Deepti and uh, today I'm going to talk about a very, very important aspect which is often neglected uh, by the students in their journey for preparing for their entrance exams. Now, whenever I talk about a competitive exam, I have always said that there are three very important limbs to prepare for a competitive exam. The first one is your content, right? It forms the base on which you are going to build the story of your success. So, the second important component is the MCQ skill, right? And the third component is revision. Today, I'm going to talk about a very, very important component, and that is how to develop your MCQ skill. It is very essential, and I've often seen that this is one of the areas which is neglected by the students while they're preparing. They would prepare their content, or they would take care of revision because everyone is scared of it. But throughout the journey, we are not giving importance to developing an MCQ skill to understanding how to apply the concepts into questions. So today, I need to tell you that when you are talking about developing an MCQ skill, it's not just solving a Q-bank. What happens is when you're solving a Q-bank, you actually know the topic. You sometimes often know the sub part of the topic that you're also talking about, and there is a bias, right? Uh, your thinking skills, are not being utilized the way they should be. And if we look at the current pattern of the exam, a lot of times they want you to integrate some part of the history with some part of the clinical examination with some part of investigation, right? And then, you know, you need to join these things together, put your thinking caps on and decide, you know, what is going to be the best possible answer. So what I want to tell is that a very, very important part of your preparation has to be putting yourself to repeated tests. So giving tests is one of the most important thing in your journey and it should not, not, never be neglected, right? Now today I'm going to tell you how to best utilize the test series at DAMS because you know at DAMS we are giving you four level of testing and I want you to know how to use this four level testing and I also want you to know when to use a particular test, how to go about it and how to gain maximum from the resources that are being provided to you. So when we talk about the test series at DAMS, you know, they are available to almost all courses. So whether you are a basic combo uh, student or you have enrolled into deadly combo or maybe back to basics or maybe ultimate app live or a regular face-to-face -face program, right? So no matter which course you're enro enrolled in, the test series forms a very important and integral part of this preparation. Now, as I said, when we talk about testing at DAMS, we have four levels of tests. And I want you to start with the level that I am talking about and gradually build the different types of tests that are available to you. So what are these four levels of tests? And then we will talk about what is the best way to utilize them, how frequently to give them, how to, you know, follow up with these tests. So first, let me just mention what are the four levels of testing that are being given to you. So the first level of testing that we will be giving you at DAMS is going to be called as a class test okay now class test is something which any student who has enrolled into ultimate app life or into a regular face to face program will get yes so these students will get access to the class test so this is the first level testing the counterpart or the first level itself also includes the test paper which is given to TND students. So, you know, we have these different courses depending on uh, how you're building your content, right? So, if you are Ultimate App Live or regular face-to-face, -face, you will get class tests for you. If you are a TND student, you will get your TND test paper for you, which is your first level test. If you are enrolled into back to basics, then you will get also another test which is called as the mini test. 
okay so these are the three tests that are included in the first level testing yes what is going to be the second level and let me remind you when i say class test i am also including in it the fmg students so whether you are doing fmg live course with us or you are doing fmg face to face course with us both of uh, you know both of the courses are going to give you access to the class test now the second level of testing that comes at dams is going to be what we are going to call as grand test i'm sure you're all aware of what grand test is but as i go forward i will tell you the differences in the various tests and at what level of your preparation do you need to give which test okay then comes the third level the third level of testing that we have at dams are called as swts okay so which stand for subject wise tests i will tell you how they are different from class test also because class tests are also given to you in a subject wise format but they are still different from swt papers right so they are also subject tests but these tests will be different from the test papers that you have in subject wise tests okay so they are two different sets of test papers now coming to what would be the fourth level of testing that we have at dams and that is going to be a series of mock tests and i will again be talking about them in detail so mock tests as well as the most popular testing thing that only dams is offering currently is the cbts right so the computer based tests which you are going to give in the real exam uh, you know uh, scenario in a computer center you know dedicated for this kind of national level testing so these are the four levels of testing that we have at dams and now i'm going to tell you how you are supposed to utilize these and how they are different from each other and in which phase of preparation which one will help right so i'm going to begin with the first level of testing which i said is class test so once you go into uh, you know my courses section you will see that you have access to test series and within this test series if you have enrolled into an fmg course or an ultimate app live course or a face to face regular program which gives you access to ultimate app live you will see a separate folder like this so you will see a folder for class test for neat pg and then you will also see a folder for class test for fmgs so both the tests are different because currently we have different exams for both so neat pg we have a different exam for fmg we have a different exam so we have kept the two class tests different okay now as you can see under this you will see all subject tests arranged in a year wise format so we have arranged them in from the first year subjects then second year then third year and then fourth year subjects now what do we expect from you when you say we have a class test for you and similarly before i tell you what we expect from you for our test and discussion students we have specially the test given in the neat tnd course right so you will see the labeling as neat pg or next tnd and under this you will see various tests that are again put in a subject wise format for you so the tnd papers and the class test papers form the first level of testing now what do i mean by first level of testing and what is the importance of this first level testing right so when i talk about the first level of test what am i trying to focus on number 1 your class test whether it is neat pg or fmg or a tnd paper is based on current exam pattern okay so it is primarily based on the current exam pattern and we would usually take the pattern of last 1 to 2 years right so which means this will tell you absolutely must know topics from a particular subject okay so what are the absolute must know topics from a particular subject for example you have just finished anatomy with us be it ultimate app live or regular or you know face to face whatever it is or in a tnd we want you to know that this is the set of questions or the set of topics which are absolute must knows which means these should not be missed 
and not only that these topics that we are covering in the class test or in the TND papers you should know the depth of these topics right why because as I said they are primarily based on the pattern of current years last two years sometimes maybe last three years but because the pattern keeps changing we want it to be exactly in the same format as the recent exam which means the teachers are going to see the trends on what so subtopics have been asked more in anatomy or obstetrics or surgery and then your class test paper would be made every year we make a new test paper based on the current pattern to ensure that you are not missing on anything vital and this is a level of test which has to be done first which means whenever you finish a subject from your theory right so if you have completed a subject from your theory along with that you must give your first level test right which means the first level test is assessing that once you have read your theory have you missed out some vital things which are very very important and you should not be forgetting them or you should not have left them right why because you know sometimes when you're reading your theory you tend to go superficial or you have a bias oh this is not asked in this exam oh this is not asked in that exam right so it will ensure that you have done a good work with your theoretical content and these questions will tell you how currently these topics are being asked in the exam means how the mcq is framed what language is used right whether they are giving you clinical questions whether they are giving you one-liners right so it will give you a good mix and match of whatever is required based on the current pattern of exams now please understand all these tests whether it is a class test or a TND it comes with video solutions and this is what is a you know differential creator now what is important is you know you've read your theory just now and you're appearing for a test now what should you know about it sometimes you know you've done an MCQ wrong at this time you really don't want to go through the entire details of PCOS all over again maybe this time what you only need is that okay I have read PCOS but why have I still done this question wrong why is option B wrong and why is option C correct so now which means you need the skill to apply your concept so when you hear the video solutions the teachers are going to ensure that they are not very lengthy but they are giving you the right approach to the question which means they will tell you that you know this is why the option B is wrong this is why C is right this is why option A has been given to you this is the importance of knowing about option B right so it's a very very relevant discussion which simply aims at giving you the skill not simply bombarding you with the content right content you have now what you need to know is how to apply that content Aapne bhi dekha hoga that in this year NEET PG a lot of problem was that bachas know the content but when it comes to application they somehow either miss keywords or you know they have not integrated or they have missed out on words like accept and so on so to ensure that you know these are not the kind of mistakes we make in the real exam we need to know how to use our content in the best possible way right what else when you go through these another important thing uh, some students want to ask me is ma'am when should we give a class test so a class test should be given at a gap of one week okay maximum right for example uh, today you have finished reading let's say surgery GIT with us the lectures are finished within next week itself you should be doing the surgery class test right so class test or q bank mein farak kya hai let's understand this q bank is something which has to be done side by side okay which means okay i am reading git and i am currently reading let's say Crohn disease then today you know let me just go and solve questions on ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease so q bank is something which goes hand in hand whatever topic you are reading you cover the mcqs of that topic from the q bank side by side the purpose of class test is to give you a slightly spaced revision yes 
because you need to know how much you are retaining at the end of one week. I'm not even talking about one month because you know you would say, ma'am, एक महीने बाद तो कुछ भी याद नहीं रहता. But let's understand how much basics you have with you, how much concepts you have with you. So at a gap of one week. within a one week gap give your class test or give your tnd paper right don't uh, make it longer interval number 1 why not because when you make the interval longer the first thing is now we are not sure that you know uh, was it a problem with our understanding or was it simply a recall error because you know if you give a longer gap then the commonest defense mechanism we have for ourselves is oh i must have forgotten this right but if you give it within a week's time you are more able to assess whether this problem was primarily because of a memory gap or i haven't really understood the concept behind it you need to see the kind of mistakes you are doing if it is a memory recall error yes because it's simply a volatile topic then maybe i can highlight it in my notes to tell myself okay this is something that i forget so this is something i should even read close to the exam but if something is a conceptual error or a content based error which means either i was too superficial in my content then this means i have to go back to that part that topic and cover up the other details also or it may be because you know i have sort of memorized it but i still couldn't apply so it is a conceptual error which means it's a good idea to listen to the faculty on why did i make such a conceptual mistake yes and that stays with you for a longer time so you are trying to you know break your problems into smaller parts and then you tackle them like that so you tackle your memory based problems in a different way content based problems in a different way yes so these are some of the most important things that you need to know uh, about the class test or the first level testing or even the tnd paper yes now another thing that i have to tell you is that whenever you are giving a test whatever test it is yes please understand that if you are giving a test and not analyzing for example here i have specially told you about attending the video solutions yes so if you are not really doing the video solutions if you are not analyzing your mistakes then giving the test is also futile so please ensure that when we talk about analysis you are definitely maintaining a wrong diary yes a wrong diary is a very handy tool okay and how to make the wrong diary i've explained multiple times i'm just going to give you a small gist of it that after every test you need to have three columns the first column is questions you have done wrong where you will analyze was it a conceptual error or not conceptual and content based errors go into the first column in the second column go your volatile things right for example i just forgot the value of something i forgot the bacteria i forgot the culture media right so those are simply volatile or memory based things they go into the second column and it's always a good idea that if you can start writing these volatile things in the wrong diary because then your wrong diary becomes something that you can even revise towards the later part or close to your exam the third column is new topics you know sometimes you come across a topic which you really haven't covered but you came across that in a test paper so then yes it's a good idea to just know oh this is something probable that could come up in the exams and what you need to know is that for these new topics you really don't have to go and dig the entire internet up no it's not required just whatever is given in the explanation or whatever is the uh given in the video solutions is good enough please don't go and do a research on a new topic uh, i think it is very clear from all the exams that have happened this year that they are really not asking you unique things they are just changing the language they are changing the format in which they are asking the topics right but the topics are not uncommon or unique yes so after every test ensure that you're making a wrong diary because i'll tell you how you're going to utilize it even from today beginning from today we're not going to wait for end to use the wrong diary okay so this was the first level testing similarly as i said the test and discussion is also the first level testing what i want to tell my tnd students is 
that we are giving you a lot of question practice. So within your TND folder, right, which is called as the Neat, Neat Next TND, when you join this year, this is your current news cycle. Why? Because you're going to give the exam in 2025. So 2025 is your current news cycle. And you will have tests for every subject that come up at a particular schedule. So this is where you will see the entire schedule for your TND the moment you enroll for it. So this calendar icon will give you the dates and the topics that are going to be covered on those dates. So on those dates, the test uh, you know, will be uploaded prior, but on this date, you will have a live discussion. Yes, so you have a live discussion on the app and wherever possible, you must attend the discussions live, you know, because they make a lot of difference. Uh, you know, if you see a test paper just like that, you will feel, oh, I know this, oh, I know this, oh, this is why I did it wrong. But when you really attend the discussion, you get to know so much more. You understand how to convert your notes into smaller parts, right? There will be algorithms, no, uh, there will be tables, there will be, you know, uh, ways on how to approach, what are the key points about a particular topic. So attending the discussion live uh, is, uh, you know, is something which I would always vouch for. But if you are, an, you know, an intern with a heavy duty or, uh, you know, a duty in a uh, ward which is really, really hectic, then yes, these same live discussions are also given to you after the live session in a recorded format. They're all uploaded with annotated PDFs. So you can watch the same videos, uh, you know, again as well uh, at a time when it is more convenient to you, right? So this is what you need to understand. But what I'm trying to tell you here is not only are you getting a current news cycle, we are giving you another set of previous year test papers. Now let me tell you why. So the last uh, TND that happened we are also giving to you. So which means you are getting two sets of test papers. And what is the benefit of that? The benefit of that is suppose as per the current new cycle, let's say you have a microbiology test coming up. Okay, but currently you are posted in Obs and Dini and you think that, okay, maybe I can cover up Obs and Dini right now. So, yes, you can do that. You can read up your notes in a week's time for Obs and Dini. Then give the test paper that is available here in the previous cycle and listen to the video discussion. So, it also helps you in accelerating your, uh, you know, course. Not only accelerating, it also gives you the liberty to juggle a little. Right. For example, let's say for you as of now, it's a light posting and you want to cover up a bigger subject, then use this another cycle. Also, you can use these uh, second set of test papers even later. For example, ek bar aapne cover kar liya is, aapne current cycle. Mein se. Now, let's say after three months, you again want to revise micro. Then instead of giving the same paper, you know, which will not really add to value. What you can do is give a new test paper. So we are ensuring that you get a lot and lot of test practice. Now, sometimes, you know, students would ask me, ma'am, what if I make my own custom test from the QBank? Beware, be very, very careful. I have seen a lot of students suffer because they make custom tests. Why? Let me explain you that. When you make a custom test, it it is coming with a selection bias. So what you people do is, you will select, okay, I want to do only PYQs from this. So the moment you do a custom test, you are limiting yourself to a very, very, uh, you know, niche set of questions, right? And uh, these days, PYQs are hardly being repeated as it is. What they can repeat is PYT, but again, the depth to which they go is completely different, right? So Whenever you're doing a custom module, you always have a selection bias. You will either say PYTs or you will say PYQ or, you know, you will put a topic which you feel you're weak at. Okay, let's say you feel, okay, you're weak at X topic. So you decide, okay, I will do X topic MCQs today. But, you know, do you really know that whether that X topic is currently one of the topics that is being asked in the exams or not? So, you know, you are putting in your time and energy, but maybe not at the right place. So, instead of you making a test for your own self, okay, which is never going to be as effective as a teacher makes a test for you. Yes, 
uh, you know, uh, we have all gone through uh, various tests since our childhood. I think that is something that we have been giving and doing and doing and doing. So, you know, uh, it is always more effective when your faculty subject specialist makes a test paper for you uh, because they don't have a selection bias. They are going to ask you what they feel is a must know, what they feel is where my students make mistakes, what they know that my students keep forgetting or they know that this is an area which my students neglect. So please, instead of trying to make a test paper for your own self, use the ones that the subject specialist is making for you. They really know what to ask and how to ask. And looking at the current pattern, how a question is framed is even more important because you need to understand the language you need to see what they are trying to ask you. You need to learn the art of identifying keywords. Okay. So this is with respect to the first level testing. Now let's go to the second level testing. So second level testing for us is going to be the grand tests. Now, why are they called as grand? Because they are going to cover all 19 subjects. Okay which means there will be a set of 200 MCQs, okay? And you have to give them in a time frame, right? So there is a time limit. So what are the advantages? Number one, when we say class test uh, and TNDs give you spaced revision, but they are giving you spaced revision for one subject. What about 18 others? So you may be reading actively one subject, but you need to stay in touch with 18 other subjects, at least in a passive format. Passive format ka matlab kya hai ki maine wo subject abhi nahi padha hai, but I will still do the MCQ and let me see what is my recall. How much can I retain and how much am I forgetting? Yes, and whether I really know whether this topic is asked or not and in what depth it is asked. So, uh, grant is tell you to stay connected to all 19 subjects all the time. Now, coming to what should be the frequency and when should you start? As far as when should you start is concerned, today is a good day. So, irrespective of how many subjects you have covered, even if it is like only two or three, you should still give a grand test, okay? And the first grand test, beta G, that you give, will always, always, uh, you know, be the one which will have less marks. So, don't think that if I give it after doing four more subjects, I will get better. No, you won't. Okay. So, it is absolutely okay to understand that your first grand test will not be up to your expectations. Right. And when I say that, what do I mean? So, we are going to focus on frequency. We are going to focus on number of correct questions. And these two are interlinked. For example, if your number of correct questions is less than 120, okay, then your current frequency should be once a month. Okay, it should be once a month grand test. Why? Because, you know, when you are saying your uh, number of correct questions is less than 120, it means the problem here is not a recall problem. The problem here is content. So, you will have to build your content if you want to improve your number of correct questions, right? So, very, very important. If your number of correct questions is between 120 to 140, then the frequency should be twice a month because now you have a combined problem. You have some areas or some subjects where the problem is content and you have some other subjects where your problem is memory or recall, right? So, we will therefore increase the frequency so that we get time to build our content, but at the same time, we are repeatedly hammering things so that our memory becomes better. If your number of correct questions reaches more than 140, and I would now give a more closer margin as well. So, if your number of correct questions is between 140 to 150, 
then I would say we will increase the frequency to once in 10 days. Okay, so then we will increase the frequency to once in 10 days. Why? Because now you are getting better with your memory. Now to build up your score, you need to precisely see which topics, which subjects you are doing wrong. Right? And the more you give, the more you will get to know what you are weak at so that you can work on it. Once you cross 150 correct questions and you are achieving that consistently, yes, you can start giving it once a week. Okay? Because uh, you have reached a good number. And uh, we are going to maintain this and improve this, which will only happen if I keep giving more tests, I keep finding out what I am doing wrong, I keep revising, right? So, this is frequency and number of correct questions. Now, how are you actually going to build your content or increase your number of correct questions is the key here, okay? So, what I want you to follow is definitely, definitely a wrong diary here, but don't get scared. Now, you must be thinking, ma'am, how am I going to do a wrong diary for 19 subjects? A GT has 19 subjects. How am I going to manage that? So, I don't want you to work on all 19 subjects together. I want you to work on initially only your bottom three subjects, right? Till you reach a score of 140. Once you cross 140, I want you to start focusing on your bottom five subjects okay bottom five and once you cross 150 you can actually work together on uh, bottom 10 or bottom you know uh, subjects now what do i understand or what do i mean by bottom three subjects bottom three matlab hai what are the three subjects where i have done maximum percentage of question wrong i am not talking about number of questions because, you know, if you count only number, so medicine and surgery may, gynae ops may, number of questions is too big. So, obviously, number of wrongs may also be more. So, we are not going to focus on number of wrongs. We are going to focus on percentage of wrong questions. Okay. And you will identify based on this, which subjects are coming in your bottom three. Okay, now in your bottom three subjects, I want you to do three column strategy, which I just told above, which is work on three columns. First one, kaunsa tha batao? Wrong topic based on content, content errors. Second was volatile topics and the third was new topics. So, what I want is, ki jo bhi aapke bottom three subjects hai, make a three column strategy for it and the most important thing is what I am going to say now, between one GT and the other next GT, right? So, suppose you are giving it at interval of one month, what are you going to do in this one month? So, between one GT and your next GT, you have to ensure that the first column of your wrong diary of all of bottom three subjects you are revising. Matlab, for example, let's say mere bottom three me are hai PSM, Ophthal and Micro. Hai? So, PSM, Ophthal and Micro are hai. So, what will I do? I will make a three column for my PSM, then for Ophthal, then for Micro. In each of these three, I will see what exactly subtopics have I done wrong. I have to write the names of these subtopics very carefully. Okay, so what subtopics have I done wrong? And I enlist those topics and I will revise those topics from my class notes. So you have to revise all these wrong topics from PSM, Ophthal, and Micro before you give the next grand test. That is why the spacing is important. So, kuch log kya karte hain? they are only counting the number of grand tests they give, right? So, they, they'll say, oh, I'm giving every week, I'm giving every two days, I'm giving every three days. But they will see that their number of correct questions is not improving because you're only counting. You are not working on the quality of the content. So, spacing of grand tests is very important to ensure that we have a good uh, spacing to ensure we are covering our weak zones. 
right so this is uh, when to start how to start and what is the frequency also i think there will be another doubt in your mind now and you will ask me ma'am as of now i have only covered five subjects so what about the miss if my you know bottom three are those which i have not covered so now listen to me if you have covered only a limited set of subjects as of now let's say you've covered only seven so abhi aap apna bottom three un seven mein se hi dekhoge so make your bottom three subjects from the ones that you have covered so far not from the ones that you haven't covered right so bottom mein wohi dekho jo aap pehle cover kar chuke ho so that will help you in passively revising what you have covered previously and you are doing wrong also right so this is how you will approach the grant test now uh grant test again uh, as far as dams is concerned we will have grant test of every difficulty and we keep changing the difficulty with every grant test sometimes it will be easy to moderate sometimes it will be moderate to difficult right so we want you to stay in touch with all types of questions also um, you know the grant tests are not just made from our q bank so we don't really just pick up questions from q bank and make a grant test no grant test is again every subject teacher at dams which means all 19 subject teachers are contributing so every subject faculty every month contribute to the questions of grant test right so again which means we are ensuring that there is a no there is no bias right we are not uh, we are ensuring ki aisa nahi hona chahiye every time they are giving you very easy questions in one subject and very difficult in another subject no so when the same teacher is making grant test they know that in last gt they have already covered these topics in the next one i want to cover these topics right so they give you a good variety they give you a different different difficulty level also so that you uh, you know the exam doesn't take you by surprise also when i talk about gts yes our gts also come with video discussions right so always listen to the video discussions especially for your bottom subjects because that is how you will improve your mcq skill right so video discussions aate hain pattern न्यू पैटर्न अभी जो हम ग्रांड टेस्ट डाल रहे हैं दे आर ऑल बेस्ड ऑन न्यू पैटर्न नीट पी जी मतलब दे आर इन दी फॉर्म ऑफ फाइव सब सेक्शन एवरी सेक्शन हैज अ सेपरेट टाइम लिमिट यू फिनिश दैट देन इट ऑटोमेटिकली गोज टू द नेक्स्ट सेक्शन एंड सो ऑन सो ऑल द न्यू जी टीज दैट आर कमिंग अप नाउ आर बेस्ड ऑन द न्यू पैटर्न वेर वी हैव सबसेट ओके then moving on to the third level testing and that we call as subject wise test now subject wise tests are more extensive as compared to your class test or tnd papers for example your class test in tnd papers will probably have you know a range of 70 to 75 mcqs okay but when it comes to subject wise test they will give you a much more comprehensive collection so for moderate uh, and large subjects we have 200 mcqs for short subjects we will have 100 mcqs now what is the importance of subject tests subject tests are based on last 5 to 7 year pyqs and pyt which means we are giving you a wider coverage as compared to your ct or your tnd paper so this ensures that up to last 7 years you are going through the pyqs right also um, subject wise test will cover almost all patterns of questions which means they will have one liners also they will have image based questions also they will have clinical vignettes also so all sorts of mcqs because you know we want to cover the last 7 year pyqs right so it gives you a very comprehensive coverage and through the subject tests you will get to know okay at this subject i am not doing well even though i am reading somehow something is lacking and that something is content so once you go through these you understand that which subjects you need to give priority to also please do not think that these this subject is less important this is more we have seen in recent inicts in neat pgs 
that you know the distribution of subjects is very very skewed sometimes they are asking a lot of ent less of ophthal then sometimes they'll ask a lot of ophthal and less of ent so uh, we need to ensure that at least some subjects for us are above excellence some are average and none is below average right so subject test help you with that now when should you do them subject test is what we will use in our first revision first revision ka matlab kya hai ki aapne let's say you did anatomy let's say 3 months back now you want to go through anatomy again because you feel you don't remember it so this is what we will call as first revision now first revision may when we go through our notes we will go through the notes in a detailed manner right first revision should not be compromised it should go through or you should go through all parts but maybe at a faster pace okay for example let's say uh, when you did anatomy for the first time let's say you took 10 days now when you are doing a first revision try and cover it in you know half the time try and cover it in 5 days that's how it has to be every revision should take 50% time of the first time right so do it at a faster pace and now to assess yourself don't give the same class test paper again don't do the same tnd paper again better to use a different test paper which gives you a true insight on what you are doing wrong what you are doing wrong right what you are forgetting what is volatile for you so this is where you will use the swt it will cover the pyqs also so this is a perfect time to club okay so uh, uh, swts also remember come with video solutions right so they also come with video solutions so that then and there you know what mistake you have done was it a content based error or was it a memory based error okay then we finally move on to the fourth level of testing right what is the fourth level of testing fourth level is usually something that we do closer to the exam so it includes the mock test and the cbts now mock test in the test series you will see we have separate sections so there is a separate section for neat pg mock there are eight mocks currently and they are in the new pattern which means five subsets similarly you will have another column for inict mock right and inict mock also has currently eight mocks and uh, the top ones are again new pattern which mean four subsets right similarly you will have a separate section for fmg mock also so there are a lot of mock papers there as well in the pattern in which your fmg exam happens which means like a paper one and a paper two which is how your real exam happens right so mock papers should you attend all of them yes why they are all made with different difficulty level and this is why you need to attempt you should go through some papers which are easy to moderate uh, you should go through some papers which are also moderate to difficult so let's not i wash okay let's not think oh paper is going to be very simple and let's not think paper is going to be very difficult let's be open it can be easy to moderate it can be moderate to difficult so i have to be ready for everything yes what is the difference if the paper is easy to moderate what you have to know is that your number of correct questions should be very high okay otherwise you will be in the clutter zone okay so there should be high number of correct questions secondly when the paper is easy to moderate you cannot afford to do silly mistakes this is where your silly mistakes need to be tackled they have to be least or minimum because every silly mistake is going to cost you a lot right so if the paper is easy to moderate these are the two things that you need to take care of also when the paper level is easy to moderate your attempt ratio has to be very high you have to go more aggressive in this paper so it tells you you know that real exam mein bhi ye karna hai on the other hand if the paper level ka difficulty is moderate to difficult 
then things change a little. For example, then your number of correct questions can be, you know, in the range of 140 to 150 also. Maybe 150 would be a good score, right? Silly mistakes is okay. Itna matter nahi karega, right? But easy paper mein silly mistakes bhoat zyada matter karta hai. And you can go a little defensive also, right? Which means your number of attempt questions can be a little less. Some things, if they, you know, if it is a difficult paper and you haven't heard of something, you can actually leave it, right? So this is how you need to train yourself on uh, different fronts because you know you don't know what is going to come your way so you prepare yourself for everything from easy to difficult so give all mock test papers when should you start giving the mock test papers it is a good idea to give or start giving mock test papers from your second revision which has to be even faster right so for example first reading took 10 days First revision took five days. Now second revision should take two and a half days, right? So second revision ke time mein you start adding mock test to your preparation, right? Because you need to practice a lot. Why? Because the more mistakes you do, the more you need to you get to know what I need to revise from my notes. So you keep going back to only that part of the notes and start revising it. Yes. So this is where you start adding your mock test papers. Mock test papers at DAMS don't come with video solutions, but they come with explanation. So, they come with written explanation. All other tests come with videos and explanations both. But mock tests will have only explanations, no video solutions. Only some of them might have some video solutions, but not all of them. Okay. So, similarly, INICT mock is different. Why? Because uh, there are different set of topics that INICT is fond of asking. Even the subsets division is different. So, it is four sets in INICT and it is five sets in NEET PG. Right? So, we have uh, therefore kept it separate so that you can focus on the ones that you are currently appearing for. So, agar INICT RS, start giving the INICT mock. Agar NEET PG RS, start giving the NEET PG mock. Then, Similarly, uh, FMG, the last uh, lap, okay, the last lap is where we will add exam simulation, right? So, we want now that our students should be prepared not only for the difficulty level, but other things also that affect how you do in the exam. For example, in a CBT, you have to go to a computer center which may be nearby which may be a little far so you know it prepares your mind because this is what happened in this year NEET PG some students had to travel you know hundreds of kilometers to a center maybe they had to travel a day in advance or a couple of days in advance right and all this affects your uh, mental stability you have to ensure that you're sleeping well you're getting up on time reaching the center on time carrying your documents uh, you know, ensuring that you're not empty stomach, but still you're not, you haven't eaten a lot as well. So, all this affects those three hours. So, please remember, go three, three and a half hours. You have to play the best match of your life. Uh, you know, you work very hard for six months, seven months, eight months. But those three hours, you know, are as important as those six to eight months. So, there are a lot of things that affect your mental status ko affect karti hai. and that is why, you know, you must ensure that you are giving the CBTs. Now, we are having the INI CBT and the enrollment is open. Please remember the registration will close on 15th of October and the test date as of now is 26th of October, right? The exam is on 10th of November, so you get pretty much time to assess and evaluate uh, after the CBT. You can enroll for the CBT directly from the app itself. Similarly, you have NEET PG CBT also, okay? Now, you can enroll only for INICT or you can take a combo pack which will give you INICT also and NEET uh, PG CBTs also, right? So, it is up to you how you want to enroll. 
um, uh, but yes, uh, you will have to enroll for this separately because uh, we do it all over India and it is done through third party. We have to book centers in advance. So we need to know the number of candidates who will be appearing for the test in advance. So don't forget to register for the test and it is a must do. A lot of times people say that DAMS CBT gives you the real life assessment and your real rank often corresponds to what it has been in these CBTs, right? The CBT can be given on the app also, but I would still say it is better and much better if you go to a center and give it if you really want the real exam simulation. The CBTs would also come with video solutions. And obviously, all the tests come with detailed analysis where you get to know which subject, how many mistakes, what topic and so on and so forth. So my study analysis gives you a detailed analysis on the app itself of all your test papers. You can track, uh, you know, how well you have been doing, which subjects have been coming in the bottom and keep assessing your, uh, you know, areas which are weak and keep working on them. Now, after all this, once you have understood the four level testing, I've also told you about the three column strategy. My only last thing is that I want to say is whatever you might be doing every day, bacha, please keep one hour at night. Okay. For what? Right. So one hour every day at night, irrespective of how your day has been, how tired you are, please try and give this one hour to your wrong diary right if you start from today and if you are consistent with this i promise you you will come in the top ranks there is there is no doubt that your number of correct questions will Im not improve they will improve do the wrong diary consistently identify the topics very specifically uh, use the you know bottom three subjects first and then Start revising only those subtopics. You don't have to revise everything, just that subtopic. It will hardly take you 10 to 15 minutes per topic. Yes? And that is what you do between one test and another test. Also, you know, sometimes bachas will ask me, ma'am, if I do wrong diary for all tests, it becomes very overwhelming. So I understand that. And therefore, what I will say is, if you have to begin the idea of wrong diary, begin with grand tests. That is where the wrong diary is most important. Even if you don't do it for other tests like class test or TND or SWT, it's okay. So to begin with, at least start making a wrong diary. Start following the three column strategy, the bottom three subjects for your GTs. So between one GT and the other GT, start revising the topics that are in the first column, which is content based mistakes, right? So I hope now all of you will utilize the four level testing of DAMS and you will ensure that you're giving enough tests. Simply solving QBanks would not give you the edge. What you need is testing without a bias through a test paper that is made by a subject faculty which gives you the highest hit rate in the exam, right? Do, uh, if you have any queries, reach out to me directly on the Telegram channel or even as comments under this video, right? Do write back and let me know what are the problems you are facing and I'll try and help you out. But you have to promise me that you're going to do the four level testing and you can keep updating me about your progress for the same. Let's ensure that we are work in progress and we keep getting, getting better with every test. Right, so all the best everyone and I'll see you again soon.